Oh, you hear that? Oh, it's just the best sound. I love it. Never get tired of that. Welcome back, Deep Your VTV viewers. Chris Nichols here. We've got a bit of a different video for you today. We're shooting Fujifilm's new Acros 100 version 2. I'm shooting 35 millimeter here today. And uh, Acros was always a very sharp, but very kind of general purpose contrast film. Uh, I'm eager to see what results we're going to get today. We're going to develop it. We are going to scan it. We're going to look at it. Should be a lot of fun. Now for today's shoot, I'm using my original camera. It's my Nikon FE. Uh, really nice to have this back in my hands. I'm not gonna be shooting any zooms today because honestly, late 70s, early 80s zooms, for the most part, sucked. So I'm sticking to primes. It's gonna be a lot of 105, 2.5, a lot of 28 mil, 2.8, some 20 mil, 3.5 shots as well. So given the seriousness of COVID-19 right now, you know, we don't wanna be around large groups of people. In fact, Calgary's downtown core is pretty quiet. There really isn't anybody around. So. Rather than stay in the house the whole time and go a little crazy, if you do need to get out, bringing a camera, just having some solitary time by yourself can be a great way to do it. And this is what we call puddle light. Now, that's gonna go way darker, but that actually might look cool. So, center weight metering. Metal bodies, cold, cold metal bodies. 80s plastic is even cold. So we didn't have a ton of film to shoot, to be honest with you. I've got three rolls of 100 that I'm shooting around here. I've got a few shots left. I want to save those, take some portraits of Maddie. Uh, Jordan did also shoot a roll. He pushed that to 400 ISO. We're going to go home, break out the tanks, develop this all, and see how it all comes out. Okay, so it's time to get this Acros developed. Uh, this is my very simple system that I'm gonna use here. I like using Patterson plastic tanks. I always have. I like the fact that they load really easily. You might think, oh, artists only use metal and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's just no need to leave those criticisms in the comments below. We're going with Patterson tank today. I'm gonna use Blazenol, which is basically Rodenol. I've always used Rodenol. I love it. I'm gonna do one to 50 with regular agitation. And again, no need to leave any criticisms below in the comments. There's no need. Uh, I'm gonna be going ahead with using a stop bath today. I know you can just use water and get that pH down and it'll be just fine, but I'm going to use stop bath because it's my party and I'll stop bath if I want. And uh, I'm going to go with the Ilford wrap and fixer. No hardener in there. I don't need hardened eggs. I'm not going to run my keys across these eggs or anything afterwards. We're going to develop them. We're going to scan them and we're going to be good. We weren't really able to find a lot of Acros 2 development times, uh, but word on the street is it's very similar to Acros 100. So I'm going to go with that. Try to get my uh, solutions at 20 degrees as close to as possible. And you know, to be honest, like with longer dilutions and longer development times, we get a little bit of leeway, a little bit of forgiveness if we are a little bit off. All right, so I've got my fixer in here. We're going a full three minutes. I still like to over fix things one to four. When I fix, I fix it hard. Yeah, it looks nice and clear. I think it's fixed properly. Now to wash it for an hour. So we've developed our first two rolls. Actually, everything's looking pretty good. Um, okay, so this is not a proper drying rack in a dust controlled environment. So criticize me on this all you want. I totally get it, but we're gonna scan it anyways. 
So we've got our four rolls of film here shot and developed. First thing I wanna say actually, the exposures on the Nikon FE look very solid. Uh, but keep in mind guys, like I haven't done this in a long time. I don't have the equipment or the chemistry that I used to have. No wetting agent or anything. You know, our, fill, our water here in Calgary has got pretty hard water deposits and there's dust and stuff. I tried my best. You know, if you're using the RAWs, you're downloading, playing with yourselves, well, you know, deal with it, all right? You've got lots of stuff that you can still evaluate from there. You can remove the dust and the scratches, whatever you wanna do there. But overall, they look pretty good. Good. Um, the other thing I do want to say though is that deepreview.com, the staff did shoot their own files. They've got 35 millimeter and 120 film formats. So you have those samples as well. Now, first off, you might be wondering, how does this new Acros 2 compare to the original Fujifilm Acros 100 emulsion? Well, I was wondering that too, but we didn't have a roll of 100 to play with the original Acros. But, you know, Japan Camera Hunter actually did a really good test where he did compare side by side the two shots. I would say that when I was shooting Acros back in the day, I liked it, but I was never a huge fan of it because I found it very middle of the road for tonality and contrast. I liked punchier stuff like Kodak Tri-X, for example, or Neopan 400. Uh, but what I will say is I do like the new formulation more because it does seem to have significantly more contrast and punch. Sharpness looks the same, detail looks the same. I'm not really seeing big differences in grain structure or anything like that. It looks like a good fine grain 100 uh, speed emulsion, but definitely has a punchier contrast and I like that. So the second thing we wanted to check is how does this emulsion compare against the Fujifilm Acros film simulation mode? Because honestly, I like that film simulation mode, but it never reminded me of the original Acros, to be honest. In fact, the actual uh, original monochrome film simulation mode seemed more like that. So looking at it here, we can clearly see that the uh, Fujifilm X-T3, at least, in its film simulation mode of Acros is definitely contrast here much deeper blacks and brighter highlights. Uh, the, the tonal range is different. There's grain structure differences in a big way. I actually found that the Acros 2, I liked it for skin tones a little bit better, as you can see here. I really preferred that. Uh, and it is still very sharp, although when you zoom in, I think digital still is gonna have a big resolution advantage regardless. But there's a distinct look to the film simulation mode and there's a distinct look to the actual film, but I think they're actually quite far apart here. But we're not done yet because there's one more thing that we wanted to try. We pushed Acros 2 to 400 ISO, two stops increase, and we got pretty much what I would expect to see, lots more contrast. I mean, you can see now deep saturated blacks, uh, lots of gritty coarse texture, but still very sharp and actually really quite beautiful. I would say it's actually a very usable film to push to 400. Uh, actually reminds me more of the actual xt 3s Fuji simulation mode, but you know, that's besides the point. So overall, definitely a very versatile film. I like that Fuji's making new emulsions, you know, whether it's being made in England or Japan, who cares? I mean, the fact is, as film analog users, we have more options, new options, and I think this is certainly a really beautiful film emulsion to play with. I think the thing that I'm very impressed with is, you know, film emulsions are better than they've ever been before. And absolutely looking at these examples between digital and film, they're not close to the same. They're totally different looks, different intentions, and it's a very different tool set that artists can use to create what they wanna create. And so I still think that, Analog and film has an absolute use in today's world. Albeit though, it is going to be expensive and it's gonna be more of a process and that can be enjoyable, but it is something to factor in. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. You have the files at home now, you can play with those all you want. Check out deepreview.com's analog forum as well. I'm sure there'll be lots of new stuff on the Fujifilm Acros 2 Emulsion coming out shortly. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Leave your comments below on what you think. Uh, let us know uh, on Instagram and Twitter as well. Follow those please, subscribe. The notification is just right up there. Just make sure you hit that. Thanks so much for joining us for Fujifilm's Acros 2 Emulsion. We'll see you guys soon.